everybody how's it going so back to another another clamp design from the internet um, so I've made some some of my own clamps um, I've got my Millwright Carve King here and um, so the the T-Tracks and the MDF spoil board here the spacers these are about five inches and so it's hard to get some of uh, some of the smaller sort of store-bought clamps or stuff that you can buy um, into the grooves and support something that's maybe small or even like a like a two inch piece this is a typical like a three and a half wide uh, piece of, of oak here that I'm using as a fixture for um, a repeatable project and so the clamps I wanted to go a little bit longer and uh, so I, I went ahead and used some other scrap uh, oak that I had laying around and modified um, a previous design that I had used on a on another machine and so it's 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 pretty simple pretty basic right but it's got a step down here and then it's got the step in the back so you can actually use it as a lateral hold um, in which case you could use smaller one inch bolts um, or with the step down you can use it as such here with some longer inch and a half bolts now this is standard quarter 20 hardware that you can buy at a big box store Home Depot Lowe's whatever uh, and then some wing nuts and some washers um, and again, so modeling everything quarter 20 um, makes getting replacement hardware really, really easy. So um, why don't we why don't we pop into uh, Carbide Create and I'll show you how we did this. Okay, so here we are in um, Carbide Create, and this is the, uh, the finished product here. And um, I'll show you how I modeled this in, and then uh, run the toolpath. So instead of just reviewing what I've done, why don't we just go ahead and make one? So we're going to go file new. Um, no, I'm not going to save that. Uh, first thing we're going to do is set up stock. <clears throat> so my particular stock was 12 inches, three and a half, and it was half inch um, thick material. Um, I zeroed off my lower left, and um, I've got a, a retract height of an eighth of an inch. It's whatever you want to use is up to you. And even though I'm using a Millwright, um, uh, I've got the Shipoko 3 modeled in here because the the movement and the type of router is uh, is very similar. So, and, and I'm running in inches versus millimeters, um, whatever your preferences go with that. So we've got our stock set up here. <clears throat> the first thing I did was actually model in what I wanted the finished product to sort of look like from a design perspective. So I threw in a rectangle um, and I went ahead and made this, this rectangle was 3.3 um, uh, inches by one inch. And then I brought in um, another rectangle to represent the step. And I went ahead and made this 300 thou by one inch. Um, and then grab a, grab a node corner here and it'll sort of snap to the next grid. And then I just hit copy, copy, uh, control C, control V, and I move that over. And I hit this portion here. So now we're all uh, met up together. <clears throat> so this will represent the, the high step, the long platform step, and then another step down. So it's sort of elongated steps. And then the next thing you did was put in the, um, the channel to hold the material. And so we put in a channel and I made this, oop, that's perfect, two and a half inches by uh, 375 is what I'm gonna do here. So three eighths. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the corners. And the radius, since I'm using a, um, a quarter inch bit, I'm going to do a 125 radius in there. <clears throat> and now um, I want to center these two. So if I, uh, if you click that one, hold the shift key and click this box, we can then go here to the align operation. And I'm just going to line this center with the last, sorry, let's do that again, with the last selection that I, that I picked. So if I say align this with the last thing I picked, which was this, so it moves this uh, inside relative to the last thing that you picked. Uh, now, if I had gone this and then this, it would have moved the outside box relative to wherever this position, the position of the, the slot was. So uh, the order in which you click matters. And so there's the basic design. So if we grab the whole thing and we can move it around and and do all that good stuff. Now to actually um, 
make your design look like this, you have to do some additional stuff here. Um, so since you're using, using, uh, using, holy crap, using, that's a new word. I'm going to um, trademark using. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, make another um, rectangle. And I'm going to roll middle of this. And I'm essentially just going to extend this. Um, I'm going to make this. Uh, so we want it to be this box plus this box because this is our step down. So we know this is um, 3.4 inches and this is another 0.3. So we're going to make this 3.7 inches. And we're going to overshoot the top and bottom here uh, by at least a half inch. So we'll make this 1.5 inches. And um, I'm going to grab the center of this node, this midpoint. And I'm going to align it there. <clears throat> so that will now overshoot this guy. And then I'm going to create another rectangle uh, right over the top of this. Just to make sure that it overshoots the top and bottom here as well. So I'm actually just going to highlight that and copy and paste. And I'm going to grab center and center it there. But I'm going to change the height from one inch to one and a half. And, um, oh, that didn't center. Let's grab that point here. There we go. <clears throat> and so that's, that essentially gives us a nice straight line for a step down here. Um, so now, now that we're all designed, now we can start our tool path. So the first thing I like doing is pocketing. We'll get rid of as much material as possible. So I'm going to click the biggest uh, rectangle here. And I'm going to go ahead and select the pocketing operation. My starting depth is zero. My max depth, I'm actually going to go down uh, a quarter inch to 250 thou. And I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, quarter inch bit here. So um, I've got some user selections. I'm going to go ahead and just take one of their stock ones. So I'm going to look at the Shapoko hardwood uh, end mill. And I know this 201. Uh, or sorry, the, the 205 with the two flutes mimics my uh, my bit almost perfectly. So hit OK there. Um, my step over. Uh, your step over here, you can leave whatever you want. I went um, not as aggressive just because I wanted to make sure there were as few tool marks um, on the bottom of this thing since it was going to be in contact with material potentially. It really doesn't matter much. Um, but I typically do like a, a 100 thou or a, a 90 thou step down. And my depth per pass, I'm actually going to change this to 60 thou. Um, this is, it's oak, it's hardwood. I want to make sure it's getting all the way through it. I don't want a, a, a big amount of deflection um, on the router bit, moving moving too much material too fast. So I leave my feed rate at about 60 inches per minute too. Uh, my plunge rate at 15. And so then if we say OK there. <clears throat> so now we've got our first tool path. We can see the simulation. So there we go, it's just a big pocket. So you can see I left this back step alone. We're actually not going to touch that thing. It's just going to be made by virtue of the fact that it's a it's a half inch step already in half inch stock, and it's just going to get cut out at the end. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is is the same pocketing operation, but on um, this little step here. Difference being is I'm going to start instead of at zero. I'm going to start at that quarter inch depth, and I'm going to go down another quarter inch. So. 375 is where my max step is going to be there. Um, again, I'm going to change my step overs and my depth per pass. I'm going to leave everything else the same. Hit OK. <clears throat> and if we show the simulation here, so now you can see now we've got this extra step cut down. And then I'm going to do this uh, contour. So instead of a pocket operation here, we're going to do a contour operation. I'm going to use the same end mill. My starting depth is going to be that 250 thou. And I'm going to go to the stock bottom. So we're going to cut all the way through. And in my offset direction, I'm going to cut on the inside of the line. Right? So you can cut on the outside, making that hole bigger. And you can see where it just did. It made the hole bigger. Um, you can cut on the line meaning no offset, or you can cut on the inside. So I, I want that 375 
uh, total width there. So I'm going to cut on the inside. I'm not going to use any tabs. I'm using uh, tape and glue on this, so we're just going to fire right out through it. Um, and again, uh, the step over in this it really doesn't matter. Uh, depth per pass, I'm going to go ahead and change this back down to 60 thou. And feeds and speeds, all the good. And hit OK. <clears throat> and then for the last tool path, we're going to do one more contouring operation uh, all around the outside. So what we want to do is pick the whole thing. So we're going to pick this uh, and pick this, holding your shift key. And then the final little step, not that guy, not that guy. So if we zoom in, we pick that guy. So that is our, our final outline. And we're going to contour this. Uh, and again, so we are actually going to start at zero here. Uh, we're going to go all the way through the stock bottom. And this time I'm going to cut on the um, outside of the line. <clears throat> so that I get my full height. Again, I'm not using tabs because uh, tape and glue. Um, step over doesn't matter. I'm going to still go to my 60 thou depth per pass and the feeds and speeds all the same. And hit OK. And now if we look at our simulation, there is our uh, our finished part. So one of the nice things too, instead of, um, you know, doing your design and then copying and pasting your design three more times and then selecting a bunch of stuff during toolpaths, um, if you copy and paste this whole thing from the toolpath menu here, so we'll say copy, control C and control V, you can see it automatically um, uh, automatically change the toolpaths. So then we can line things up. And I'll do another control V. And one more up here. And then we can sort of get everything lined up on our stock the way we want. And if we head back over to our toolpaths, you can see that lots of stuff has changed here as far as time goes. Uh, but if we, the, the truth is in the simulation. So if you show your simulation, so now we are looking at, you know, four full clamps. So, um, so from here, you, you know, you, you save this and, um, and that way when you run your end mill through your clamp and jack it up, uh, you can just come back, grab another, uh, some more stock and, uh, and burn through and make your own clamps. So there you go. Hope this helps.